What's up guys, David Ronafalk here and today I'm here to show you how I build my shocks with the Performa caps. Last video I made, I made the uh, motion style shock and I thought it was time to explain to you how I build my shock with the Performa caps because it's a question that I get asked a lot. So um, after this video I'll also make another one uh, kind of explaining to you with, when to run either of the shocks. Uh, so that will be the next one up, uh, but first uh, let's get to this build. For us to forward in developing So before we go into the video, I'll just uh, wanted to say uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, uh, please do so. Uh, give a like, drop a comment below. I always try to check them and, and see what you have to say. Uh, but other than that, let's get to the build. So here I have my shocks uh, already prepared. Um, I already filled them uh, with oil quite a while ago, so they have absolutely no air inside. Uh, just because I had time to do it uh, this time. Um, Normally I would like to make sure there's no air inside the shock before uh, before I build them. But yeah, this have been sitting here now for an hour or so because I had lunch in between. Um, but yeah, so I have my 5x15, 5x16 uh, set up in those. Um, in those shocks right now I have 50. No, actually I went 45, 35 because it was a little heavy last time I went practicing. Still a little cold here in Sweden. So um, hopefully we'll get some more heat soon and... and um, I can go up to 50-40 uh, as when I built the Emotion Style Shock. But anyway, uh, I already made one uh, just to check so that everything was working well. Um, and I'm going to take the other shock here now uh, and show to you. So already have it without air, everything. What I do like to do is that I always like to put the bladder inside the cap before, um, before I start to build. I see some uh, using this style cap bladder that put the bladder on the shock before and then close it with a cap but I find it so difficult to kind of make sure it fits nicely in the cap uh, when doing that so this has been working for me um, and this is how I do it uh, then maybe it's not the right way I don't know but it, it works for me and uh, it, it comes out consistent every time uh, Adrian for example he builds the shock with the bladder on the shock uh, but I just can't do that so um, anyway uh, so what I do now uh, I have my shock filled pretty much all the way to the top and uh, from here I um, I just make go ahead and, and I close the cap completely so I like to leave the shaft all the way out I close the cap and when I've done that I just open it up would say like one full turn just enough so there's gap so the oil can come out the the bleeding holes here I'll put that to the side so after here I just I put the shock to, to the table and then I just slowly start pressing the shock body down and you can already see the, the oil is kind of coming out the bleeding holes here. So I just go ahead all the way until until the uh, probably not is going to hit the top uh, so it's going to hit the bladder at one time. So right there. So when I come all the way up to the top I go ahead and I close the cap and when you do this the first time you're gonna see some rebound afterwards. So I fully completely close the cap, wipe off the excess oil, and then I kind of work the shock a little bit. And for sure you're gonna see some rebound right here uh, because I'm still gonna have to open the cap once more and push the shaft all the way in again. That uh, kind of procedure I repeat two, three times normally to get it to the uh, spot when I like it. So yeah, I've worked the shock here a little bit and as you see, the shaft is kind of coming out. So what I do here, I leave the shaft where it stops when it comes out, the rebound. And then I just go ahead and I open the cap close to a full turn again. And then I press it down once more until it hits the bladder. That. Uh, so when it does that, I just close the cap again some more more oil is coming out of the bleeding holes I wipe that off work the shock once more so now I've done it one time and it's still coming out a little bit this is not bad uh, but I like to go ahead and do it one more time because I want it completely uh, as close to dead as I can so I open it up again, push that little bit down, 
I see some more oil coming out. I wipe that off, work the shock again, and at this point I think it's gonna be close to dead. So yeah, the shock is not moving anymore right now. Um, it's always gonna come out this much because um, I have the um, the shaft is, or as you have the bladder inside here, uh, the nut is kind of touching. So you have the uh, spring cup is gonna come and also the shock boot. So this kind of space is all always the space you're gonna have. Uh, but as you can see, the shock shaft is not coming out any further. So right here, the shock is, is dead. Um, this is how I always run the shock either if it's a motion style, if it's before my cap, or uh, if there is some time I would run the stock bladder as well. I always like to run my shock dead. Zero rebound for the best performance on, on the HP racing car. So um, yeah, this is pretty much my procedure to build the uh, before my shock cap style shock. And um, I have another two shocks to build, but I think you get the point. And um, you know, if you, if you try this at home, uh, if you have any questions, just please drop a comment below or uh, send me a message on my Facebook page and I will try to answer as soon as I can. Uh, other than that, I hope you liked the video and make sure to check out the next one when I kind of explain to you when to run uh, either of the shock. So either the motion style or the shock with the performer caps. So that will be my next video up, but for today that's enough and um, hopefully you liked it uh, and please subscribe. Alright, see ya.